regular meeting? If this, if this can be called a regular meeting, the order. Roll call, please. Mayor Murphy. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Turco. Here. Council Member Doby. Here. Council Member Gross. Here. Council Member Hasselbring. Here. Uh, please rise, all the Mayor Pro Tem leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, let's say the Pledge of Allegiance to the uh, the flag of the greatest nation on earth. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United States of America, of America. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and for all. Please, please remain standing while Council Member Gross gives the invitation. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance tonight as we conduct this unusual uh, teleconference meeting. We ask for your blessings for our first responders, those men and women in uniform defending our freedoms around the world, and for our city staff and for our fellow council members. We ask for your guidance in decisions that are made tonight we also ask for your blessings that we stay safe that our community stays safe and that our businesses are able to continue to function uh, during this pandemic that we're going through we ask for all of this in your name amen amen, amen. amen. we will close the world does anybody want to communicate with us there are no members of the public here except for Shelly Hasselbrink from the OC Breeze. Shelly. No, sorry. sorry, Henderson. Yeah. Would you like to speak? Yeah, I'm, I think oh, you Shelley got elected and you learned her name. If you <laughs> got elected, you would have figured out who she was. Oh, I know um, who she is. No, no, nobody called in any questions? No, sir. All right. Uh, council announcement. Tanya, would you like to go first? Who was that, me? Tanya. Tanya, Tanya. yeah. Um, I, I got nothing. Okay. Dean? All right, thank you. I've provided a list to the city clerk of the various events and uh, meetings that I've attended. Uh, since our last council meeting. Um, she has that for the record. I would also like to request that we adjourn our meeting in memory of two. Bear with me a minute. In memory of two long time Los Alamitos residents and veterans. Lieutenant Colonel retired Robert Bob Lewis passed away on February the 4th, just two weeks shy of his 100th birthday. He served in World War II. He worked for 20 years with Bill's Brothers Coffee and another two decades with the Pacific Coast Terminal Warehouse. His widow Fran continues to live in their Los Alamitos home. They had three children, seven grandchildren, and one great grandchild. Memorial, service were, memorial services were held on February the 29th at St. Hedwig's Church. The second veteran was Robert Bob Wolswinski, who came to Los Alamitos in 1966, settling on Enterprise Drive. In addition to his military service, he was an active Boy Scout leader, a husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. He was a member of the Sons of the American Legion. His services were held last Thursday, and he has been laid to rest at the Riverside Memorial Center with full military honors. He is survived by his wife, Jean, of 66 years, and his son, Tom, who also resides in Los Alamitos, and children, Cindy, 
Marianne, Becky, Sue, and Tom, as well as the grandchildren and great-grandchild. You know, we're in unusual times in our country with respect to this coronavirus, and I would encourage all of our residents to take necessary hygiene precautions and stay safe while our country, our city, work to resolve this pandemic. Remember that are also homebound seniors within our neighborhoods. We all know who they are. Check in on them, see what you can do to help them, and make sure they are safe. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Well, one of the Shelleys, since you guys are interchangeable today. Sure. Um, yeah, just a quick update on the operations of OCFA. The headquarters is closed. Um, for regular day-to-day -day operations. The, all the, our 79 stations are up and operating as usual. The only minor changes, um, every firefighter will be wearing full protective gear. And instead of two men in and two men out, uh, when it comes to any kind of um, medical call, uh, they're having one firefighter go in, one to, to limit any kind of exposure, and also two to save on the protective gear, because once they wear that, it's got to go BT contaminated and everything else. So they're trying to operate it as efficiently, but also as safe as possible. And that's all I've got. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I attended the race on the base, which was, as usual, phenomenal, uh, as well as the state of the city, where um, Chelsea did a wonderful job setting that up. Chet did a great job at his first uh, state of the city. And the mayor and council, uh, you all did a fine job as well, updating our residents and businesses on the state of Los Alamitos. Um, I just want to say thank you to city staff and Ron and Emily, um, uh, everybody really for their hard work planning events that unfortunately will no longer be taking place uh, given what's going on with the coronavirus. Um, uh, thank you to our employees for dealing with these unique circumstances we're facing. Uh, our police department continues to make patrols and protect our residents despite the uh, unprecedented and uh, unusual situation we're in. I mean, I just wanted to remind residents to follow the recommendations out there. We've all heard them already. Um, you know, avoid close contact with people who are sick, cover your coughs, try not to touch, touch your face, wash your hands, stay home as much as possible. Um, the idea is not that we can eliminate the threat of coronavirus, but that we can flatten the curve, slow down the rate, uh, so that our health care providers and our hospitals can deal with deal with the situation um, and we don't have a situation like what they have going on in Italy. So um, also please try to be patient with people. Uh, everyone is stressed out. Everyone is uh, wondering what's going to happen, uh, both with health, their jobs, their loved ones. We're going to get through this together, uh, but we have to we have to remember other people are also going through the same thing we're all going through. Um, and, and as Council Member Gross said, you know we need to look out for others, particularly the elderly uh, in our community and, and people who need help. So, um, with that, I'd also like to uh, ask that we adjourn the meeting uh, in memory of my uncle Joseph Churko, uh, who passed away today on his 67th birthday. Uh, he was a, a great man, and uh, he will be sorely missed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, too, would like to thank the staff for uh, the race on the base, even though it feels like it happened about two years ago at this point. And congratulate Chelsea and Chet and the staff on the wonderful job for the state of the city. I think we kind of broke new ground, and it was very fresh, and uh, people really seemed to like it. Uh, I would like to make the point to follow up on my colleague that this is going to be a several month long battle with the coronavirus. It's going to get tough sometimes, but we have to remember that for a country that likes its murder mystery solved by the top of the hour, two months in the house looking at each other is going to be a long time. There's going to be shortages, I'm sure. Of, of various products. I think if we all cooperate, we'll get through this together. Thank you. We will go on to items for the city manager. Uh, just one item, Mayor, uh, just to ensure that the public is aware that this past Friday, uh, in my role as the Director of Emergency Services, I did declare a 
local emergency uh, in Los Alamitos in order to uh, help us address the pandemic. Uh, largely what this does is it allows us to access resources and additional funding from the state and the federal level and also allows us to ensure that our communication avenues are open to all of the outside agencies that we might need to call upon in the event of, uh, of needing those additional resources. Thank you. Chad, I think you're doing a great job keeping us informed and really being at the forefront of what's going on. Thank you, sir. Wendy, we'll go on, we'll go on to the warrants. I'll make a motion to approve them. Second. Second. A roll call, please. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Cherko. Aye. Council Member Doby. Aye. Council Member Gross. Aye. Council Member Hasselbrink. Aye. Okay, we're going to the consent calendar. All consent calendar items may be acted upon by one motion unless the council member requests separate action on a specific item. Anybody care to pull anything? I move. See none. We have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, passes. Mayor, Go since on to the discussion item. Excuse me, Mayor. Since this yes. is a teleconference meeting, all votes need to be taken by roll call vote. So we have a motion and a oh, second right. by Shelley and Mark, and we'll do a roll call uh, for to move the consent calendar. Uh, Mayor Murphy. Okay. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Cherko. Aye. Council Member Doby. Aye. Council Member Gross. Aye. Council Member Hasselbrink. Aye. Thank you. You can move on to item 11. Yes, the interim finance director. City manager, you want to lead this off? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Or I could ask. Uh, is, well, let me ask first. Is there any opposition or any questions by anybody? No, Mrs. Churko, no. No, Rose. Uh, what, what, why don't we just make a motion and approve it and go on to the next one? Uh, Mayor, before, oh, uh, Mayor, uh, I'm sorry, just a, uh, based on the, some changes that have happened at the uh, state level, particularly Senate Bill 1436, uh, we're required to make a short presentation whenever there's an appointment of an executive level position in order to ensure that the public's aware of the compensation that's involved. And so okay. with that, I'd like to actually turn it over to, to the city attorney to uh, give that briefing. But before I do, I just want to say that while I know you haven't had an opportunity to sit and meet with him yet, um, I believe Craig uh, Kohler to be an excellent addition to the city at this point. He has a wealth of um, experience in different cities, uh, special districts. He also has uh, also been through the recovery effort with regards to um, receiving money from FEMA for disasters. So that's yet another skill that we'll be able to draw on here in the next couple of months. And with that, I'll turn it over to the city attorney. Thank you. As uh, the city manager uh, mentioned, uh, pursuant to the Brown Act prior to the city council taking final action on the recommended agreement, um, we are required to provide a verbal report on the executive compensation granted by that agreement, uh, which can be summarized as follows. Uh, if approved, the agreement will provide Mr. Kohler with an annual salary of $140,192, and Mr. Kohler would be entitled to those benefits, including but not limited to holidays, bereavement, vacation, sick leave, health and life insurance, and retirement provided for executive management employees in the salary and benefit resolution. And with that, I conclude uh, my verbal report. Thank you. Any discussion? No. Any motions? No motion. I'll move to the team. Thank you, Dean. I'll second. I'll all in favor of approving the interim city manager, interim finance director. Roll call. We got to do a roll call. <laughs> yes. 
Our item 11A, I have a motion by Council Member Gross, seconded by Mayor Murphy. Roll call, Mayor Murphy. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Cherko. Aye. Council Member Doby. Aye. Council Member Gross. Aye. Council Member Hasselbrink. Aye. Okay. The pass will go on to um, 11B. City Manager, you're gonna kick this one off? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the item before you is one that was discussed during the last um, council meeting where we actually had a review of the city's fiscal sustainability plan. And the discussion then centered around the idea that the council would like to receive more information with regards to exactly how the voters and the residents of Los Alamitos view city services that are being provided and also some of the different capital improvement projects that the city might need to undertake in the next 10 years. As you all know, we are currently showing a structural deficit, which is the result of years and years of the state changing the, uh, the rules with regards to funding that was coming to local cities, and then also the impact of um, just the new economics of the way cities are run and the costs that are associated with those, uh, with those services. Uh, the item before you is to actually contract with FM3 to go out and do additional polling in order to get more information with regards to the citizens reaction to the possibility of a one and a half cent sales tax uh, that would be spent here locally to ensure the uh, continuation of uh, vital and essential services here in the city. Um, as you can see from the contract, it would appropriate just over $25,000 $25, in order to uh, conduct this study. Um, and that will be done here in the next month or two. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I have one question. The timing of it, what, are, what do they think is the likelihood that people will uh, want to respond to, to a and essential services here in the city? That uh, is, as you can see, it would appropriate just over $25,000. I'm sorry, there seems to be a little loop with the audio here, but just, uh, it's an excellent question. I've spent a, a significant amount of time on the phone with FM3, uh, both checking into what exactly they think the likelihood of respondents would be, and then also taking a look at what exactly the information that we'd hope to glean from a poll that was taken at this time. Um, they of, are of opinion that it would be beneficial. All information is good. However, the results will need to be viewed through that prism that you just brought up, which is we are obviously in a time of uh, national crisis. Um, there is going to be some things that are at the very top of everyone's mind. Um, that being said, the reason that the questions are structured the way that they are structured is to allow for uh, essentially a setting of the table in order to hopefully get the respondents into the right frame of mind to be able to answer honestly and truthfully about the the uh, questions that are being put in front of them. Um, but again, you are correct. Uh, any poll that's taken or any community outreach that's done during this time is going to have a slant of um, the coronavirus and ultimately the, uh, the impact that that's having on local businesses and then on just the person's individual lives. I will mention too, just for the sake of, I know that some of the discussion at the last meeting centered around the ability to get respondents. Um, they did say that given the fact that everybody will be at home, that uh, you'd have a better chance of uh, having a higher response rate and then also that they are going to deploy a method to allow for the survey to also take place in text messaging, which. Uh, Anyone will tell you uh, millennials tend to uh, trend to being able to uh, answer things on their phones um, when it's a text. So I think that their proposal has laid out a pathway to success, but again, we will have to uh, measure it uh, to take the results and measure it against the, uh, the context of the time that the questions are being asked. Okay, and I don't know that I saw, um, I, read, I read through the proposal and to the best of my understanding, 
is there a way that they're going to be phrasing the questions to kind of account for the atmosphere that we're in or will it be exactly the same as the last set of questions no it, it will account for the current atmosphere both uh both laying heavily into the fact of the pandemic and then also another uh, contributing factor is obviously the turmoil in the financial market and how exactly that will play into people's overall decision making. Okay. That was my only concern, if you could call it that. Okay, thank you. Shelly, you have anything? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Um, the time frame on this is next couple of weeks. Ideally, we would like to start in the next couple of weeks. That being said, um, we are going to be trying to make sure that we time this so that it doesn't happen right on the uh, the eve of new information coming out or um, uh, just want to make sure that we're able to get everyone's attention when we are doing this polling. So the date will be a little fluid, but I do not intend for it to go longer than a month. Thank you. Dean, any questions? Yes, I do. Um, I've talked to the city manager previously. The staff report on page two of three makes reference that uh, they're going to get feedback on a half percent sales tax measure. I believe that that's supposed to be one and a half percent. Uh, and I'd just like to make sure that that's clarified. Secondly, um, the cost under financial impact for the 25000 indicates that we're going to have to take that fund uh, from the undesignated fund balance. I would like to know how much has already been spent with the FM3 group mm -hmm. and is there any additional expenses anticipated against them number one number two the gentleman that we've got under contract for sustainability how much longer is his agreement through and what are we doing expense wise on him so the total question relates to what this process thus far has cost us so that we have an idea of where the expenses have gone to measure against any re, re, uh, any return so council member uh You'll have to forgive me. I thought it prudent to limit the amount of staff that I brought to this meeting tonight, given the uh, the uh, social separation that we're supposed to be uh, observing. And so I do not have uh, either Mr. Kane or our finance director here. That being said, if I can speak in generalities, I, I think I can get to the heart of your question. Uh, the polling that we originally undertook with FM3 was almost right around the same area, so around $25,000 with regards to the polling that they did before, which again, I think gave us a significant amount of information and a good baseline to start this next step. Um, with regards to FM3 going forward, um, typically there is an opportunity to do further uh, testing uh, down the road. Um, that potentially could come with another cost, but again, that is a decision for the council to make in the future once you have the information that comes out of this um, this survey and this outreach. Um, with regards to uh, Mr. Kane, our fiscal sustainability manager, he is uh, limited in the amount of hours that he can work. So he is um, what is typically known as a 960. I'm sorry, I always get the two numbers confused. He's on a 960, which allows for um, him to only work a limited amount of time. We currently are at the point where we are limiting his time to about five hours, uh, and that will progress um, each week until we get to June when his uh, contract expires. So um, all of those amounts um, save this additional um, 
survey have already been budgeted for and uh, were approved with the overall budget. Um, I can give you and the entire council a more detailed breakdown on the costs that have been, uh, what has been expended to date um, uh, via email if that is uh, okay with you. That would be fine. My preference would be just to put it in the weekly. That way we'll have some definition. Uh, I'm, I'm really concerned about the amount of ongoing expenditure we're getting. Uh, part of what was discussed at the last meeting or the last presentation with FM3 was an analysis of the March election and how ballot or not ballot measures, but the uh, bond issues would fare. And from just a cursory review that I did, it looks like they didn't fare very well, uh, including school bond measures outside of the uh, Proposition 13, which, which failed. So that analysis coming from him in terms of timing uh, will be helpful to us in terms of making a decision on whether or not this needs to go on the November ballot uh, and what our other options would be in the future. In other words, is, do we have to wait till 2022 to bring that up uh, or is there other elections uh, that with the with the pandemic issues that you brought up earlier are, are going to be big decision makers from the standpoint of our putting it actually on the on the ballot i agree sir and, and again uh part of the work that we have done today with fm3 especially here in the last couple of weeks has been to ensure that uh we go out and we get all the information that we possibly can and make sure that we're viewing it through a proper prism uh, so that uh, the council has as much information as he possibly can with regards to your deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dean. Mark? No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a comment, really, more so than a question. Uh, if this was my own money, I, I wouldn't spend it. I would, I would trust the people of Los Alamitos are going to understand what we're trying to do. However, due to the importance of what of getting the one cent sales tax at least through that. I, I feel it's it's worth worth the money for the insurance of that that we as Dean said we make the right decision between our various options and as to what election we put this in. So um, if it's all right, I'll make a motion to um, follow the recommendation for the twenty five thousand five hundred dollars. Second. Second. Cherko. All in favor? Roll call. Aye. Opposed? Oh, roll, roll call. call again. Okay. You yeah. think I'll catch on by the end of the meeting. <laughs> I have a motion by <laughs> Mayor Murphy, a second by Councilmember Cherko to approve the recommended items for 11B. Roll call, Mayor Murphy. Aye. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Cherko. Aye. Councilmember Doby. Aye. Councilmember Gross. Aye. Councilmember Hasselbrink. Aye. Okay, approved. For the record, did somebody's dog just vote? Hmm. That was mine. I'm sorry. I tried to mute my phone. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. The timing was impeccable. <laughs> okay. Molly uh, wants to be on the record. <laughs> <laughs> That will um, bring us to the end of the open meeting, and we'll go into closed session. Mr. S city Attorney, would you care to bring us in? Thank you, Mayor. The City Council will now adjourn into closed session to discuss items 12A and B as listed on this evening's agenda.
Um, can, can we mention the people we're going to close in honor of now? Yes. Okay. We will close this meeting in honor of Joseph Turco, Bob Lewis, and Dean, you're going to have to help me with the last name here. Bob Olszewski? Yes. Uh, city clerk has the proper spelling on that. Okay. Thank you. So we will go thank into you. closed session. Thank you. Okay. Ma Madam Clerk, if I may, I would report that there were no reportable actions taken in closed session. However, staff is requesting that the City Council by majority vote agree to add an additional item to tonight's regular meeting agenda. Uh, the item concerns the coronavirus pandemic and we're seeking the Council's determination that the coronavirus pandemic does constitute an emergency which requires immediate action. Um, it, to the extent we have a majority vote to place that item on the agenda, we would then bring forward for consideration a resolution of the City Council of the City of Los Alamitos confirming the existence of a local emergency. So if I could please ask for a roll call vote on the determination as to whether the item be added. I'll so move. Second. Second. We don't have to roll call no more? Yes, we're ro roll yes, call. We do. Yeah. I have a motion by Mayor Murphy, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Churko. Roll call, Mayor Murphy. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Churko. Aye. Council Member Doby. Aye. Council Member Gross. Aye. Council Member Hasselbring. Aye. Okay. With that uh, motion carrying, we will now bring before the City Council consideration of resolution number 2020-07, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Los Alamitos, California, confirming the existence of a local emergency. Also move. Second. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Gross and a second by Council Member Hasselbrink to adopt resolution number 202007. Do roll call Mayor Murphy. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Cherko. Aye. Council Member Doby. Aye. Council Member Gross. Aye. Council Member Hasselbrink. Aye. Okay, so that's all our business today, correct? That is correct. We will adjourn to our next meeting in April. Thank you all. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.